Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Celeste and this is my YouTube channel, Celeste Creates. Today is Wednesday, February 28th, 2024, and I am back for floss tube number 66. So it has been three weeks, not two weeks, since I last uploaded a video, and I have really been trying to do every two weeks, but I just couldn't make it happen last week. So um, last week, or the weekend before, had been such a a busy week and then um I just felt like I played catch up all last week and so a video just didn't happen a lot of cross stitch didn't happen last week either so um but I'm back three weeks I still hope to stick to my every two weeks um filming and uploading a floss tube but I know y'all understand if every once in a while that just doesn't happen so <laughs> y'all all have busy lives too and so I appreciate um you know, your thoughtfulness in that way. And most of all, I appreciate you coming to spend some time with me today. Um, if you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad however you found out about my channel, I'm so glad you're here. Um, and if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back once again. So I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. I would love it if you um, leave me comments. I love, love, love reading your comments. It's always so much fun. And um, so today I've got some cross stitching to talk about. I've got some quilting to talk about and a little bit on my reading because that's the other thing that takes up my time when I'm not either while well, I'm doing stuff around here and homeschooling. So, um, I guess I could reintroduce myself. I haven't done that in a long time. So for those of you who are new um, or sort of new or have just forgotten, <laughs> my name is Celeste and I am a um, quilter, cross stitcher, et cetera, um, down in League City, Texas. So I'm about halfway between downtown Houston and Galveston. And pretty much I've lived in this area not pretty much. I've lived in this area all my life. So about five or so, six, seven miles as the crow flies away from my current location and my husband too. So this is home. Um, and I mean, it's not that we don't ever think about living somewhere else. We just, this is where we are right now. Um, like I said, I cross stitch, I quilt, I do other things that involve needle, fabric, thread, all that. And I love to read. I have five kids. My oldest is 23 and my youngest is 13. And so they're four boys and one girl. And um, I only have two left at home right now, full time that I homeschool. I've homeschooled them all and survived to tell the story. And uh, so that's it. I'm Catholic. I love my faith. I love Jesus. And um, I love sharing what I love with you. So that's a little bit of a recap. So either way, anyway, whatever. I'm glad you're here. Okay. So let's see, what have I been up to? Um, I have rearranged since I last saw you on video. Um, so if you've been, if you've watched some of my previous videos, then you know that I think I had another arrangement when I first started, but, um, used to have my little blue sewing chair back in this corner where I stitch when I'm upstairs. Um, and I was kind of tired of being stuck back in the corner to stitch and sit. Um, it's a really big game room and I do share it, but I was shoved back in this corner feeling a little closed in. So this table where I sit right here is my ironing surface and I kind of do some work here too. And, um, it's still in the same place. It's just gotten moved further out into the game room. So, um, yeah, I'm really pretty happy. I didn't move this cabinet and I didn't move that shelf. I think I pretty much moved every other stick of furniture. And now my sewing chair is across the room in a different corner, but I'm not cornered. <laughs> so I'll try and insert a video if I can um, at the end. So anyway, I did do that and I'm happy with it. I like it. It feels a little more open. Um, so we'll see. Um, so I've done that and, um, we've been busy. We had a marriage retreat we went to, um, and then just been doing all the things with the kids and their activities. Um, 
boys doing drama and if one of them's doing robotics and just all the things all the time and enjoying it a lot. So, um, you know, at some point you realize, man, I, I've only got so many years left of the things I'm doing right now, right? With the kids. And so, um, trying to enjoy them while I can. So let's get started talking about cross stitch. And I had both a finish and an FFO. And so let me show you those. First, I finished, and I gotta be careful because I've still got little pins in this because I had it hanging on the wall. I finished this little piece called Needlework ABC. And I'll be giving, here's the chart. It's by Little House Needleworks. And I'll be giving that away today as um, the giveaway. Share that. I mean, every stitcher I think needs to make this. I did change the colors of the alphabet and words, so it was had more blue in it. So I got that done, and I got an FFO the other day. So cute. So I just made a little wall hanging quilt. Here's the back. And it is hanging across the room near the window and near my new uh, stitching spot here upstairs. So that was both a finish and an FFO. So that was nice because this whip had been hanging around for a while and so I was really kind of glad to get that done. So this was stitched on 36 count raw natural, probably my least favorite linen ever, 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 but it's done. And um, I used all the called for colors except I did change um, the color of the letters and then the words that come out of the letters to uniform blue by um, Gentle Arts, I believe. And I just like the color that it added. I think they were a brown. And so I really like the way that that turned out. So if you win this chart, I did make note of that on the back. And so anyway, that's done and hanging up. I really love that. So that was a finish and an FFO. And then I had one other finish, which I'm really excited about. So I know I've shown you before, this is the Blackbird book called Honeysuckle Manor. Really, really pretty things in it to stitch. But the two things that, when I got this book, I was like, I'm stitching those, um, were these two samplers. This is Hannah Lovina Joslin, and this is Margaret Harris. And I've already finished Margaret Harris that I did in a different color way that I um, had seen a picture of and then I kind of figured it out on my own and did my own conversion based on somebody's, just a random photograph that somebody had done of their own. And I just finished this one this past week. And I think I told you before, here, let me show you this one. So this is for my maternal grandmother and I've told the story many times before, but um, her dyed hair as an elderly grandmother had kind of a pinkish hue to it and she loved the color pink so it was appropriate and so I was stitching this sampler um, Hannah Lavina Joslin for my maternal grandmother Jeanette Till and so I finished that this week and I did this on 37 count corn tassel by Legacy Linens and I used all the call for colors. So I did not make any changes to this. And I love it. There's some really beautiful colors in the called for. And it just makes the, the flowers around the border, the house, I mean, just really beautiful. So I got that finished. I love that. And then I'll show you because I haven't shown it in a while. Here's the other one. This is Margaret Harris with the color conversion that I did for my paternal grandmother, Sadie, whose hair was always kind of a purplish blue. And um, so I finished this one a while back. So those are the samplers that I will frame and hang up together somewhere. That one. And that one. So I'm really excited to have both of those done and I want matching frames for those. Even I think I can probably find two used frames that 
are bigger than this, maybe they'll match or be similar and I can size them down and get those framed and on the wall. So I'm super excited about that. And like I said, this is called for all called for colors, but this one, if you want my conversion for what I did for Margaret Harris, you can email me. I've been sending out several emails about that lately and I'm happy to share that with you. That is my own conversion. I just did it myself from a photo that I saw. So, um, let's see, what's next? Those are the things I finished and FFO'd. Oh, and I've had an, uh, a lot of people ask as well, and I'll answer that in an, I'll answer that in comments sometimes, but I will also say here, this is 36 count Zweigart granite. I'm sorry, you can kind of see the wall behind it, that granite. Love it, it's a really, really pretty color. So that's what that one is. All right, so I showed that one. I showed my little wall hanging. And next would be my ribs. Okay, so what have I been working on? Um, after I finished Hannah Lavina Joslyn, then I thought I'm gonna pull out another whip that I feel like I might be able to get a finish on. And so I kind of looked at my list because when I did my whip parade and kind of wrote them all down this at the beginning of the year, I kind of put some little marks next to ones that I thought, you know, these are pretty close. I could get to a finish on these. So one of those was, and this is the day from Plum Street Samplers. This came out in 2022. I remember loving this market release. And I'm really not too far from finishing it. So I am using, I did not bring up the colors with me, but I'm using all the called for colors with, I'm not doing any ecru, I'm doing, and I'm not doing grits. Okay, so it calls for, the white that it calls for is grits, and then it also calls for ecru. I'm not doing those. I'm doing bamboo because I really wanted it to whiten up. And the other change I made, the other change I made is I have gray sheep. <laughs> because my white sheep just weren't showing up, or goats or whatever, the other goats. Um, they just weren't showing up. And so I made that change and I'm really happy that I did. I'm having trouble with the color. Hold on just, okay. So, still it's not working like I wanted to. So I can get most of it on there. So my goats are gray. And I technically, I could, I should probably go down. <laughs> Let me just pause. Okay, I sent my son to go get my threads. And I found something better to hold this up with. So here is where I am. And so anywhere you see white, um, I have changed that to bamboo. Thank you. So classic color works bamboo. I also have 3866 on my ring, but I don't think I've used it anywhere and it's not called for. So maybe that was one that I was kind of um, toying with, maybe using, but I've definitely been using the bamboo. My sheep, I'm sorry, I keep calling them sheep. Laura's gonna separate the sheep from the goats. These are goats, okay. So my goats are gray and their little feet and horns are a darker gray. They just show up better. They just look so cute. Somebody I think did this with theirs and I thought that's a great idea because you can see that that white, just even as white and bright as bamboo is, it doesn't show up super good. I guess if I'd done it much darker. Anyway, the gray for the goats is General Arts Barn Gray and gray. And then DMC 535 is for their little feet and their horns. And I don't think 535 is called for. No. So those are colors that I pulled myself. So 535 for the feet and barn gray for the goats. Okay. So if you look at the chart, I've made some progress. I've still got to finish filling in 
the, I gotta do the insides of the windows, which are white, and I need to, I don't know if you can see it, but I've still got some mortar to fill in around the bricks. But that's good filling. Um, there's plenty of like little doodads hanging out. If you look real close, there's all these little doodads hanging out everywhere. Gonna be here too. Um, I guess I started adding this flower over here. So I'm almost done with the top section other than some doodads and a, a bee or two, I think. Yeah. So then all I have left is another little border here, which goes fast. The words, which should go really fast and another border. So I think I'm pretty close. I think I'm going to work on this until it is done. And, um, I love all the colors, but I am really, I'm looking forward to having it done. So here's my story. I love Plum Street charts, but I have to be careful that I don't start too many because they tend to have, and this one's not even very bad. For example, Liberty's Welcome. I'm going to finish it. It's going to be on my wall someday. But I have to be careful not to start too many of those type of Plum Street ones because it's a lot of house fill in, a lot of big houses. And so there's just something about them that are a little bit more time consuming to me and maybe don't hold my interest as well. And I don't know if it's just that I, I love antique samplers so much and this is very different for me. I don't know. Um, but I do need to be careful about starting and having too many of these started at once. I think right now I only need to finish this one and then I have this joyous day or this joyous season, which is a Christmas one that's similar. And then of course, Liberty's Welcome, which I've just resigned myself. It's just gonna be 20 years from now, I'll be done with it. Um, so I love them, but I have to be careful because I, I tend to start feeling bogged down by them. I don't know if that makes sense, but. Anyway, that's how I feel. I won't say never. I've learned my lesson. I will not say that I will never do them again. Um, Cause that's not true. <laughs> but I do need to be careful about having too many of them started at once. So hopefully in the next two weeks, I'll have a finish on that and can show it to you. The other thing I've been working on, I guess I'll just keep using this little thing, which I finally got back to. So my friends, the Saturday Stitchers and I, we had decided at the beginning of the year that we were gonna do a Biscornu together. And I think April has already done and created her first Biscornu, but I'm not sure the rest of us have. So I am stitching this one. I bought this pattern on Etsy and I will link it below. And I changed the colors um, to something I liked. So I was able to finish the top. and get a start on the bottom. So, really like that. So I'm working on that and the colors, here's my colors that I changed it to. I can't show you the chart, I just have a black and white printout, but like I said, I will link it below. And those are my colors that I changed to. If you decide you want to purchase the pattern and you want to know my colors, again, send me an email. Email, And then hopefully, if I can get this finished, then we can um, put our Biscornus together. This is 36 Count Tamara from Tropical Stitches, my favorite linen dyer and friend. And I just love how it's looking on there. All right, that's my other whip. That's my upstairs, and then this is the day is my downstairs. And that's about it. That's what I'm working on. All right, so. Oh, and this is the day is being stitched on 36 count Grazia, also by Tropical Stitches. I love that linen, so, so pretty. All her colors are beautiful. Her linen has a wonderful feel to it. So um, if you don't already own some Tropical Stitches linen, go get over to her website and order some because it's beautiful. All right, so what are my plans? I'm gonna finish both of those things. I'm gonna finish the Biscornu and I'm gonna finish This Is The Day. Then I have other big plans. All right, so my friend, 
on Instagram. Her name is Kara, and I believe she's Pink Daisy Stitch. I will link it below. But she sent me a message on Instagram not too long ago that she was starting Sarah Stewart Hardman. I wasn't able to pull mine out and stitch along with her. I really wanted to, but I was gone and there was just, I wasn't getting much stitching done anyway. But I saw the other day as I was looking on Instagram that um, she was, I just saw her posting something and then um, her hashtag was starting all the big girls or something like that. It was really cute. And so I was like, okay, uh, Kara, I need to know which other ones you're doing and whether I want to stitch any of them with you when you start them. So we have several in common that we'd like to stitch. The Rose Wreath Sampler, um, she might start Ann Dale. Um, Jane Cowie is kind of on our list. And then one that I said, okay, I'm stitching that. Let's start it. How about Easter Sunday? We'll make it our Easter Sunday start. So that chart is Hannah Sanderson, 1849 by Dutch Treat Designs. And I will insert a picture of the sampler right here. I have loved this sampler for a really, really long time. I think, I think it's Senorita Stitches maybe that has done it and um, I just love it. Um, as you can see in the picture, there's two colorways. It was originally printed in a magazine like back in 1998. And so the colorway that was used back in 1998 in the magazine is given in the chart that you can buy. I bought the PDF from Dutch Treat Designs. And then um, the other colorway is a darker colorway like you see in the picture and that is closer to the reproduction. Uh, or the um, the actual sampler itself, I believe. The sampler um, with a darker color fabric. An updated reproduction color key, she says, with darker fabrics. Um, so, she says here that Hannah's original sampler is actually stitched on darker linen. The reproduction version has been updated to more closely match the colors found in the original sampler and the color changes that Hannah made. So, um, I love this sampler. So Kara and I are going to start it in, um, on Easter Sunday and which will be here before we know it. Um, and I am going to do all the DMC. I have them sitting right here in front of me, but I can't pick them up because I haven't finished putting them all on floss tags, but I am doing the DMC on the cream fabric. So the lighter one, the one she originally published in the magazine back in 98. Not chosen a linen yet because I just got the rest of the DMC today, but I'm gonna look through my linen. I probably am gonna have to order a piece, but what I did do is make a change. So let me show you that picture again, or let me show you the picture of the version I'm gonna do. So what I don't love, and I think it's the reason, I can use the black and white to kind of demonstrate that I have, I have just held back on starting this sampler and doing it is because as beautiful as this hem is that Hannah put up here on her sampler, it's just a lot of words all mashed up there at the top and they're kind of boring up there. I just don't love the whole, you know, the paragraph that's up here. And so after I decided, or after Kara and I decided that we were gonna do this, I pulled it out and I was like, I wonder if I can do a Kim Goldman <laughs> and cut and paste and, um, and remove those words. So I was able to do it. I can't show you what I did, but essentially the words are all gone. I was able to cut, move the whole border down and it leaves me, um, probably about that much space in between this top flower border and the, and the top border here. And I will put in my own um, scripture verse. Kara suggested maybe an Easter verse or prayer of some sort. And so I'll kind of figure that out later, but I'm really excited about it even more so now that I was able to do that cut and paste and move that down. 
and it actually makes the whole sampler more square. So that's kind of neat too. So I don't need as much linen. <laughs> Still need more than a fat, a fat quarter. <laughs> but um, so I'm really, really excited about that. Um, next time I'll show you the DMC all together. And um, so Hannah, <laughs> Hannah and I, Kara and I will be starting this on Easter Sunday. So if anybody would like to join in with us to start Hannah Sanderson, 1849 please leave, leave a comment and let us know that you want to, um, and, uh, we'll join in and um, she's just beautiful. She's really, really pretty. So I'm really excited. I'm going to do this one. So, um, here was one of the other ones that I got this for Christmas. And so this has been on my list. I already had even written down how much linen I needed. <laughs> um, I pondered doing this one in, um, it calls for either DMC or overdyed and I it's just such a big sampler again kind of like Ann Dale I think I'm, I, I am going with the DMC on this one because I then I have confidence that over time the DMC is still going to be the same but I need to get another skein or um, things won't change so much so as much as I love overdyes because they truly are my favorite floss to stitch with um, I think I'm gonna be happier knowing that this one's done in DMC and the colors are gorgeous. I believe Nerissa is doing hers in DMC. I think Lisa Kindred Stitchers is in Overdyed. I may be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure. And then Nerissa's is in, and she finished hers. I think hers is DMC. That's all beautiful. So I've got the rest of the DMC for those today too. So I'm looking, this I won't start for a little while, but it was kind of fun to go ahead and pick up the DMC while I was getting the others. Um, so those are my plans, but I also just really want to work down on my whips. I'm down to 34 whips from like 37 or 38. So I'm happy about that. And, um, really don't want to start anything new until, um, Easter. So I'm kind of making that a challenge for me for Lent and, um, working on what I have. And so that's been good and fun and I love what I have. So I'm not, I'm not unhappy. <laughs> so, um, so I think that's that for cross stitch. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I am teaching a cross stitch class tomorrow night. I think I put this out there, um, locally in our local town of Friendswood. There's a couple of quilt shops and one of them is Sparkly Elephant. She has let me teach. I've taught, um, a couple things for her. And so this time she's letting, they don't sell cross stitch products, but she's letting me do a beginning cross stitch class. So even though they mostly sell quilting, she's very open to letting you come in and teach some other things. There's people doing crochet or just, I really appreciate that. And so she's letting me teach cross stitch class. So I'll be doing that tomorrow night and next Thursday, beginning cross stitch. So I hope that goes well. Um, then I think what else I've got to show you is some quilting. So I finally, um, these have just been hanging out and um, they've just been glued on. <clears throat> and I finally got these, the hand applique done on those these two blocks. These are part of the Cherry Crush quilt by Verna Mascara from uh, the Vintage School. <clears throat> and so I already have, I'll just pull them out. I can reach them, so I'll go ahead and pull them out. This one, this was the one that took me a while to get it all appliqued. <laughs> so all those cherries, they weren't hard to make. It was just like, well, it's a lot of cherries to put on. And I have this one done. And I have, that was the first one I did. So these, like I said, are all part of the, um, I can actually show you the pattern too. The Cherry, Cherry Crush Quilt Kit by the Vintage Spool. The lady I bought the kit from at the quilt show, not last year, but the year before, um, has it in a different arrangement and she had the flowers, but it's, essentially the same quote. So I'm looking forward to, it's been really fun to work on and I'm really enjoying hand applique. So I have worked on those and let's see. So I did those. And then I had a couple other quilting projects I worked on. I think I showed you this quilt last time, 
um, it was called Libby's Log Cabin. I'll put the link to the pattern below. And I had originally seen um, Olivia way back when, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, she had this quilt pattern. And I went and got it and had decided on a selection of Lori Holt fabrics that I was gonna do this quilt in. And then it just kind of morphed and changed into something, um, just really a completely different colored quilt. <laughs> so by the time I finished it last week. So here is that quilt. Okay, so I have to get up to show you this. Here it is. Probably still can't show all of it to you, but I'll insert a picture at the end. So it ended up being red and aquas and blues, and they're still all Lori Holt fabrics. And these are reds and pinks in the middle here and browns. And I finished that quilt. <laughs> so there you go. I just love it. I will add a picture in at the end. But Okay, and then here is a little table runner I made. And I'm hoping to teach this at the quilt, same quilt shop, hopefully in June. And this is based on a table runner in Lori Holt's Farm Girl Vintage, the first book. Red and white squares in the middle. And then these uh, sawtooth stars on the end that I sized up to 18 inches, or 18 and a half unfinished, one on each end. So anyway, I'm hoping to teach that class uh, in June so people can have it done for their July display. So that's what I've been up to as far as quilting. All right, like I said, I really haven't bought anything. I bought these DMCs today. I'm really trying to stitch what I have during Lent. Um, so I bought these two sets of DMC today and a couple things that I needed. This is all stuff I'm trying to get ready for my cross stitch class tomorrow night. Um, but so I really haven't bought anything. Okay. Um, that's not a bad thing. I have so much. <laughs> um, so that I think is all my plans and cross stitch and quilting reading. Um, so I think I told y'all last time I had the, how much, I, I think I've said this probably three times now, how much I have enjoyed the Jane Austen mystery series done by Stephanie Barron. Most of them I have listened to. So one through 10, I was able to get from the library on audio and listen to, absolutely love them. It's been the same um, narrator every time. She does a great job. And, um, and then for some reason, 11 and 12 were not available um, to listen to. So I had to read 11 on the Kindle and I, I couldn't even get 12 on Kindle. I had to find a paper copy at the library, which I did. Finished both of those. So now I'm back to listening to the last three. I'm on number 13, uh, which is called Jane and the Waterloo Map. There's only two more after this and those are on audio as well. Yay. Um, but I am just, I'm getting a little nervous because I'm going to be done with this series soon and I have enjoyed it so, so much. And so you start getting to this end of the series and you're like, oh no, I've, I've, I've you know, these, these characters has, have they become my friends. I'm going to miss them. Now what do I do? So, um, it doesn't have to be a mystery. But if you all know of any great um, historical mystery series that are both clean and preferably pretty well written, um, I would love to hear about that in the comments below. So once I finish Jane, my Jane Austen mysteries, I think I'd like to start a new series, but I'm not sure what I wanna start. There's some series that I have read all of. <laughs> Um, and I'll link these below, but let me go ahead and share them with you. One is a series by um, Tasha Alexander. And her name, it's The Lady Emily. I love that series. I'm up to date on that one. I read them as they come out. Another one is by Victoria Thompson, and it is the Gaslight Mysteries. And I'm completely up to date on that one. <laughs> um, there are a few that I could go back and 
pick up and see where I left off because I kept track of where I left off in Goodreads so I know what I have and haven't read. Um, but sometimes I'm kind of like, well, I wouldn't mind starting something new and kind of listening through those. So if you have some great recommendations, please let me know down in the comments below. Historical mystery series, clean, preferably well-written. I would love to know what you have to share. And if you want to follow me on Goodreads, um, I think I'm Celeste Creates. I forget. It's in the comments or it's in the description down below and you can request to follow me and see what I'm reading. So I was doing the two Jane Austen mysteries at the same time. I was um, reading one on Kindle and reading the other one on, or no, I was listening to number 12. That's right. I was listening to number 12 because I got back to that one. I was listening to number 12 and reading one at the same time. So I had a listening and a reading. And then I finished both of those pretty much about the same time, picked up number 13 to listen to. And then I started a Jane Austen that I have not read yet, um, an, an actual Jane Austen, which is Mansfield Park. And so I started reading that the other day and I'm enjoying that so far. Um, I really would like to get to the point where I've read all of hers. I've read Emma, Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, in Northanger Abbey. I feel like there's one more, but maybe not. Um, I need to read Mansfield Park. I don't think I've read, um, oh gosh, what's the other one? I can't think right now. Y'all are probably all <clears throat> telling me what it is. I can't think. Um, and then there's some other, there's Lady Susan and Sandition. Anyway, so I've got a few more to read. Why can't I think of the other one? So, uh, anyway, right now I'm reading Mansfield Park and I'm going to work on that one. So that's what I'm reading. Oh, and I'm reading St. Teresa of Avila's book, The Interior Castle, which is good. I read it back in college for a theology class. I don't remember it. I thought it was hard to read at the time. It's not so hard to read anymore. She does kind of jump all over the place, but I do like it. Um, but I have a little bit of a hard time with it because she is pretty holy and I'm not sure I'll ever get there. Anyway, we'll see. <laughs> so I think the only thing I have left is giveaway. So I did announce this giveaway winner for Ann Peg last time and Mary, I did get your email and Mary, I have not mailed this yet, apparently, because I'm holding it. It will go out in the mail as soon as I hear from today's winner. So last time um, I had for offering two charts and your keyword was key. Um, we had this one that's called a numero. I think it's just called numero. Anyway, from Jeanette Douglas, the keys. And then we had this one from Rosewood Manor, keys to the kingdom and I wanted to give those away as a set. And so the winner of these two charts together is So congratulations, send me an email, it's down below. And um, I will get these in the mail to you as well as yours, Mary and Peck. So thank you for everybody for commenting and entering the giveaway. I do read all the comments. I love reading them. So thank you so much. And then, like I said today, I'm going to give away my copy of Little House Needleworks, Needlework ABC. So we're going to use the word needlework and tell me what needlework you're working on right now. And down in the comments and use the word needlework and you can be entered to win this chart for my next video. So I think that is all I have to share today. Um, I hope you are doing well. It's feeling springish here. We got a little cold weather tomorrow, 50s, which is nice. Um, but it's been in the 70s-ish here and it's actually been really pleasant. So I'm enjoying that, even though I think it just doesn't, I'm surprised it doesn't feel colder. Um, and we're kind of chugging our way through the Lenten season as we approach Easter. And so if you are, um, if you practice Lent, if you celebrate Lent, um, then I hope you're having a good one so far. And I'd love to hear if you do do Lent, I'd love to hear about what you do. And so, um, anyway, 
or if you have questions about Lent or anything else, let me know. I will be back hopefully in two weeks, hopefully with another finish to show you. And um, I hope that you are blessed and you're having a great time with all your stitching. And I will see you really soon. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Bye-bye. Okay, so I told y'all I'd put a video at the end. So this is as you walk into our game room. Like I said, it's a, it's a big room. It's really nice. There's a son sitting on the floor doing some reading. So um, that's his school desk here in his football helmets. And on the wall, I have like a little, um, what do you call that? A quilt wall or something like that. And those are my raven blocks that are hanging there. And just don't look at all my mess. Over here, of course, there's a closet that holds both homeschool and um, crafting and quilting. This is all my quilt fabric. It's all of it right there. And my cutting table. I did not move. Those two things did not move. Here is, I guess let me come this way. Uh, a little file cabinet drawer. And this was my parents' um, stereo cabinet, Ethan Allen stereo cabinet when I was growing up. So that houses all kinds of things and a little cart for my sewing machine. Here's my sewing machine now looking out the window, which is really nice, enjoying that. And over here is a fan because I get hot. This is a, sh a shelf I bought at an antique store. I have all kinds of little goodies on it. This is my mom's sewing machine cabinet and sewing machine, which I need to have doctored up and tuned up so I can use it. So then out here, let me back up in the middle. I don't want to run into anything, is where I sit and film. And it's a mess because I just filmed. See? And that's my ironing board, and I like I even sit here and play in school, and um, I work there a lot. Um, so that's out here in the middle of the room. This used to be over by the window. This is my other son's school desk. These work great. I love these tables, these IKEA tables. I'll not get rid of those. Those will be incorporated into my sewing stuff someday. Um, here is where my chair ended. <laughs> so it's in another corner, but I don't feel like trapped anymore. I've got my mom's crochet afghan, the granny square afghan. This is a little antique sewing cabinet that my mom bought, and I, I got that when we had to sell our house. This is actually another sewing machine I bought for 50 bucks in Brenham, and it is a, um, a singer um, featherweight, but it needs to be fixed up. But for 50 bucks, I was not gonna pass that up. And so then you can kind of see the rest of the game room and the mess and the homeschool books. And some, what are those bars called, Braden? Those right there. They're not pull, it's not a pull-up bar, it's a, anyway, dip bars, dip, dip? Yeah, yeah something like that. Cause I have boys and they like to work out and more books and there's the child again that's Brayden and Legos yes 